I see you're a trendsetter. You chose this $260 sweater hoodie by 20 Montreal. And we're gonna use this Nike hoodie as well as this Tommy Hilfiger sweater. So let's do it. I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. If you're watching this video, then you have walked into a series called Choose Your Own Upcycle Adventure. Yes, it's just like those books back in the day that we used to read when we were kids, Choose Your Own Adventure, where you can go and pick the ending and if you died early, you could go back again. Yes, so this is part of that series. I do have the intro video linked in the description box as well as the rest of the videos. They're all kind of linked um, together in a sneaky way um but yeah so it's super exciting and if you do enjoy this series definitely subscribe so that we could do more of them we could do t-shirts we could do blazers we could do men's dress shirts whatever you guys want all right so let's get into this one all right so for this one we have our inspiration like i said i always have it in front of me it may not turn out exactly like it is although i am pretty darn close this time but um it just so happened that gray was one of the things that they had. I have this very understated Nike hoodie. I didn't even know it was Nike when I bought it. It was thrifted. And then a Tommy Hilfiger sweater, also thrifted. Then I went and grabbed a t-shirt that is pretty firm. You don't want like an undershirt because like undershirts, I don't think is gonna work for this. But this is a pretty, you know, it's a pretty thick t-shirt that we're gonna see if this works now the first thing we want to do for this project is um, because this hoodie is so big and we're converting it to something that is a lot more fitted turn this inside out and we are going to pin it on the side and the reason I turn it inside out is so that once I get ready to cut or sew then I won't have to then turn it um turn the seams there i've heard so many different differing schools of thought on this but um this is the way i do it and yeah you could choose however you like but yeah so i add pins to the side as well as to the sleeves because i'm going to just run a stitch from the bottom hem all the way up through the sleeve to take it in one thing we want to make sure is that we didn't take it in more than our sweater this sweater is fitted on me, so they want to be kind of similar, so I can see that they are. I want to make sure that I'm taking it in the same amount on both sides. Don't want it lopsided. That's about three and a quarter, <laughs> almost four and a quarter, so we need to even that out. Uh, three and a quarter, plus four and a quarter, <sighs> seven and a half three and three quarters. I knew math was gonna come in handy one day. <laughs> All right, so now we're even on both sides and you can either just cut it off and then sew it or you can sew it first and try it on, make sure it's not too small and then cut it off. That is what I actually recommend. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pocket off first just because I don't need that part and I can use that part to put on another hoodie, whatever. And I think for the sleeves too um because they're going to be cut off anyway i think i want to approximate where i'm cutting all right so now we can go and run this stitch on both sides uh, up the side all right so this is what we have after we minimized it of course we have all of this because there's extra fabric in there so once i cut it away stretch it a little bit it should be okay um and then if you just want to cut it away and then add some snips along that curve it will definitely help it to relax a little bit um but what i want to do is the reason i put it on for one thing i wanted to make sure it wasn't too small and the other thing i want to know how how far I want that top curve to come and I'm thinking that I want it to come about right here so I'm going to add a pin right there and I also want to like kind of get a tape measure and see how far below so basically I would like it the bottom of the sweater to go to here so that's nine and a half inches from where the pin is and five inches from the end. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I'm not gonna cut it too close just in case I have to make any adjustments later on. Um, 
But we already tried it on. We know at least that it fits. All right, let's turn this right side out. So I'm gonna tell you right off that that is not the technical way you're supposed to adjust the sleeve, but that is the fast way <laughs> to take something in, like a top or a coat or something like that, to take it in. Not technical before the tailors get in the comments. Not technical, quick and dirty way. Time to curve. And we're gonna keep the back straight just to keep it simple. So the back is gonna go straight from, from here to here. All right, so sleeve. Are we ready to do some cutting? No, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right, now we need our t-shirt. All right, so we're gonna use the, if you're cur curious about this curve, I just talked about this curve in my last video, things that you may want to think about putting on your Christmas list if you're an upcycler. Um, this has been really helpful and you guys can see in this project is especially helpful. Um, and the ones, I got this back in architecture school. Um, it doesn't have measuring tape on the end. They sell them now. All of them have measuring tapes on the end. So um, yeah, you can get this for like, I think $8 on Amazon and other, like at any art supply store, different things like that. So I'm just going to flex it so that it matches the original curve. Then I'll draw on the t-shirt, the same curve. And then I will um, take that out, making sure I keep the curve the same. Actually measure, make sure that each portion, you know, is kind of the same. So if you want, you gotta account for your seam allowance on both sides and then the part that you want in the middle. Okay, so I think two inches will do, do it for me. We're gonna take it from these points straight across on the back. So that goes there. Now for the sweater. We want it nine inches, but I'm going to elongate it a little bit just to make sure. And then I'm gonna lay the t-shirt on top of the sweater. So then this will be our curve. So it is time to start sewing. We're working with all stretchy materials. So in order to keep them stretchy, we're probably gonna need to do like a zigzag stitch to you know, make sure they continue to stretch. We are gonna have to do that um, instead of a straight stitch. So let's start pinning. Okay, so we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew it around the edge. In order to do this stitch so that it is still stretchy, I have my seam, it's a zigzag seam, but it's a really shallow one. And so um, my stitch length is at like two to three, which is, it's normally always in between two and three. And then right here, my zigzag is in between a two and a three. So um, they're both in between two and a three. You could do it more shallow if you want, but you know. And then this one is set at one. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also have a ballpoint needle in here. Um, I read that that type of needle is better for uh, like jersey knits and knit and stretchy fabric in general. Ah, stretch is really good. Let's go clip the sweater to this part. All right, here we go. Now we can turn this inside out and pin it to the t-shirt. And you're just placing uh, good side to good side. And we will be surging this edge because we don't want our sweater to fray. Um, if you don't have a serger, try an overlock stitch on your regular sewing machine. All right, so now we have that all clipped and we can take it to the sewing machine and sew it up. So look at this, 
you guys i am so amazing and just when you think you're so amazing you feel like oh my gosh why is it so bumpy in the back Guess who sold the wrong side to the wrong side? I don't have time for this. So that happened. We're gonna sit down, get a seam ripper and, you know, try again. All right, so it turns out that I didn't do it backwards. I just forgot to cut this one flat. I don't know how in everything that transpired how I forgot to do that but I did so um yeah you guys probably saw it a long time ago and was yelling through the screen please don't you god I regret it so leave me a comment if you caught it and if you've done anything like this recently let us know all right so I'm going to once again put this back on and sew it up and I'll show you what it looks like um, after that because then we have to come back and do our sleeve. All right, now that's how it's supposed to look. On the back, just straight, pretty straight. But at any rate, at least it's flat. And this part I really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the sleeves. I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's the exact same process, exact same process. All right, so. I'm still at it because I realized that with this one, um, this t-shirt, like I said, pick the thickest t-shirt you can find. This t-shirt is still too thin to mix with my battery went out, but I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting you guys this information. So I have this here, then that way it won't be standing on its own and it won't matter how flimsy this little t-shirt is. I attached it like this, and then you fold it over, and then just sew the sweater to both the white and the t-shirt and the hoodie. All right, so that was crazy. Like, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> but let's see how it turned out. best friend didn't care about the rules good on the weekends i'll be in fools drifting the deep space so brave and so stupid just like the movies how it's gonna stay in the fight with you i really really like this i like matching stuff like this with sportswear and stuff like this and it's really kind of giving me a like WNBA vibe like you know your boss said it is you know you're supposed to dress up but you dress up the hoodie and still wear it like you know that kind of vibe <laughs> but yes this is totally me absolutely me wear it with jogging pants wear it with these pants which are also a DIY I will uh, link them in the description box below so you guys can see that as well but yes I really really like this and I'm so glad that I figured out actually how it was supposed to be done but don't discount the other one I never you know get rid of anything I always try to make it work and so this is what I did with the other one did it begin? Where did it end? Hanging on those strings Unable to bend I never listen Trying to prove it Just like the movies How it's going I just decided to turn it into like more of like a workout hoodie and I really really think it's so cute with the Nike and the Tommy Hilfiger and I just punched out a couple of the stitches right on the side seam of the sleeve to put my thumbs through to really give it that like I'm going for a jog even though I know I'm not <laughs> I'm going for a jog look and yes I think this is super cute I have it on with my merch leggings that's the blueprint DIY um, be unique leggings you can see them right down below in the merch shelf and I also want to let you guys know about my free Facebook group where you can share your upcycles as well as my upcycle class where you get to actually get those upcycle projects done if you are having a hard time starting definitely go check out the other videos in this series links are in the description box below or you can go back to the original intro video 
I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!